Hey everyone, it's Rick Morgan again. I am, as always, your ever-loving comic book scientist, and it's been a while since I posted anything. I've been busy I'm traveling and up late in a hotel room far from home now, and I just wanted to talk about the effect of temperature on the aging rate of your paper, which we've already said is sort of is an primarily an acid-catalyzed uh, decomposition of the cellulose fibers. An old rule of thumb says that if temperature increases by 10 degrees Celsius, that that will increase the rate of a chemical reaction by a factor of two or more. We always just sort of say that and it, within small ranges and for some reactions, that's true. Um, then we say, okay, well, temperature can make an important role in how fast your, your paper deteriorates if it follows this, what we call an Arrhenius rule. The Arrhenius equation is uh and it's has lots of very has lots of forms and the primary form is is the one that you see here on this um up here in this area i'm gonna put a little black circle around it here that's the standard logarithmic form where this reaction rate the rate itself is a natural log of the activation energy is this kind of a what we call a um a frequency factor how many times this reaction happens uh, to the power of the activation energy divided by, I know it's weird, the natural gas constant times the temperature. And depending on your units, it's going to be in units of K, but we'll call it Celsius since they're the same, just a, a sliding, sliding scale. And that's what this is. So this A again is the, um, the frequency factor. The E is the activation energy, what it takes to get it started. And it's, that's, divided by the gas constant, which is um, can either be in uh, kilojoules or in um, kilocalories. And that's that's the equation. So um, most chemical equations don't strictly obey this, but they do within some small some small temperature ranges. We, um, we have f fudge factors that we use for specific cases that are really accurate when we want to model um, a, a reaction rate. This is primarily for gases, which is how the gas constant gets in there. Um, but the effect of temperature on the deterioration, deterioration, the, the effect of temperature on the deterioration of paper has been studied extensively, and they use this method called uh, cover uh, reversioning, or, or they call it yellowing. And they measure the fiber strength. So they will, what they'll do is they will measure the color of the paper. They'll kind of age it artificially with uh, heat and moisture, and then they'll fold it so many times and under standard load, meaning they'll pull it with a, a device, and they'll see what it takes to, to break the paper, and this is how, how they test it. Um, I, can, I can provide resources for this if you are more interested in it. So when we say the acid-catalyzed hydrolysis of cellulose produces a, a loss in this, this folding endurance, and it's, it's known, it does. Uh, but but what's the effect of temperature, right? How, this is how we would find out. Um, generally, they heat the temperature in a range of 60 to 120 degrees Celsius um, for these tests. And under the constant, uh, you know, temperature, what they do is they normally plot. They'll plot. Um, uh, they'll have a little graph of one over T, uh, one over the temperature, the inverse of temperature times the. Uh, reaction rate constant, and this tells them how weak the paper gets with paper at a certain moisture and a, and a certain acidity, and the, the reaction, the rate mechanism will uh, go up like that. Uh, sorry, actually, for the inverse of T, it'll go down like that. Yeah, my bad. Um, I'm tired. So what we do, and what we do is we linearize this equation. So if you were to take the uh, the, the log of both sides, you get the natural log of K. And since when you multiply um, uh, things within the natural log space, it's the same as adding them. You can separate, you get natural log of A plus natural log of E to the E over the RT. But the natural log of E of something that's to the exponent of E is just, this just cancels, right? So you just get natural log of A equals E over RT, which brings that down to regular space. Then if you kind of rearrange it, so you put this in the front and then you separate the T out so you've pulled the t out of the um this part of it so it's it's still on the bottom it just makes it more clear you can see that you've sort of what we call linearized this equation where if this if this were y right and this was mx plus b you see that this would be the slope of your line and this could be the intercept 
So you would be able to get this sort of a frequency constant. And you get, and since you know the gas constant, you'd be able to get the activation energy by the slope, by how steep this thing goes at the rise over the run, we say the delta y over the delta x here. And then where this thing crosses this line would be this value. And you can kind of solve for that. But that's not all that important here. That's if you really want to know the actual rate constant. But if you just want to know how fast or slower something's going, you can use this. You can use, you can do the ratio of, whoops, this is supposed to be a one. Let me, uh, change that color if I can. I don't think I can. This is supposed to be K1, uh, not, whoops, what did I do? Um, so that's supposed to be, I don't know what's happening here. Oh man. And it's, I mean, this is strange for me because I'm using this on my computer for the first time and not my iPad, so I apologize. But uh, I'm just going to leave it. I don't care. It's supposed to, it's supposed to be K1. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, K2 over K1. So what you'd get, what you'd see, is that an average value of, of about 30 kilocalories per mole is what we get for the, the activation energy, which is this guy right here. Okay, we get that. And... If we use that average value and we increase the temperature from, say, 25 to 30 degrees Celsius, which isn't that hot, right? We're going from room temperature to like 80. We will see that if you solve for all of this, you know the gas constant, you use 30, you use T2 minus T1, you would get an increase of about five and a half times. It's, it's the K2 over the K1, the ratio of those would be five and a half times. So think about that five, just five degrees hotter, and you have five or six times the reaction rate of decay of your paper. So that, there's a lesson for you there that by reducing that, the temperature of your storage is really important. Also, for those of you who put your, your slabs on the wall in the, in the sunlight, brother, we're gonna talk about sunlight later, but that is really gonna hurt your paper, especially the reds and the yellows. And letting them come out in the sunlight like that and just being exposed to warmth is not a great idea. I would keep them cool and dark if you want to have them for a long time. Do not put them in a cabinet that has light in it, like a light bulb. Never, never do that. Don't put them any place with direct sunlight. Definitely want to use UV protection, but here we're talking about just the, um, just the temperature, not the light. And so, yeah, you get five and a, you get five and a half, um, even with the, the most mild um, activation constant that I can think of we could use for paper, I'd still get 4.2 times X. So it is, uh, it, it's, it's a pretty big deal. There's a lot of variables in the aging of paper, but if you're just looking at that one, then you really want to keep, keep it cool. And that's why. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's not going to be greatly produced. I know I only have a lot of mistakes. So please forgive me. I'm just trying to get something out and I am really exhausted and, um, I will talk to you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Happy, happy new year. I hope 2021 is better than 2020. Take care. Bye.